I left off, we got some models, but these are pretty flat, right? Every polygon is just one solid color. So how do you do textures? Oh boy, JavaScript doesn't even have skewing. Oh, this is not trivial at all. Oh. Okay, it's been a while. Um, Textures are hard. Let me do like really rudimentary lighting instead. Basic concept here. We have a light source. We have a polygon. If it's hitting it straight on, and we detect that it's you know completely normal to this polygon surface, we increase the brightness you know, up to some maximum amount. If we're hitting this at an angle, maybe it's brighter, but it's not super bright. Now, if there's no light at all, you could have it be completely black, but then you wouldn't be able to see anything. Maybe instead, let's just have some minimal level of darkness. Pretty simple concept, calculate the angle to the normal, and you've got your lighting. Now, how do I do that? Let me make a light source object. So I guess when making the light source, we're just gonna give it a point in 3D space. There, there's a nice light source object. All right, so let me just have an array of light sources. Yeah, let's just make a, a new light source. I'll put it at 800, 800, 800. So right here is where we set the color. The context's fill style is equal to the poly's fill style. I guess I'll do like a new function called um, calc the lighting. We give it a polygon. Oh, I already broke everything. How'd I do that? So let's loop through all our light sources. But now I got to think about how do I get this angle, right? I'm trying to calculate something like this, something like that theta there. Anyway, from my extensive knowledge of this topic, the angle between this yellow line here and this red line here is did I get this right? Like I said, my extensive knowledge. The dot product of A, B divided by the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B, and that gives you cosine of theta. I think it makes sense to make this yellow vector go from the light point source to the midpoint of the polygon. So midpoint function, pretty simple. Sum up all the components, then simply divide by the lengths of each. So let's go grab the midpoint. There's our light vector. Now I need the vector that's normal to polygon, which is like, it's A, B, and C, I think. And then I just have to follow the formula that I wrote from the internet. Do I have a dot product? I have to have a dot product here. What the frick? Why do I have a dot product function? There, fine, there's a dot product function. Let's just take the dot product of the light vector and the polygon normal, right? So that's this part. So right, we're going to do the magnitude of one of these vectors. We multiply by the magnitude of the other vector. Uh, and there, that's our cosine of theta. Theta is equal to math. Well, although do we even want that at this point? I feel like that zero to one value is more useful than anything else. Instead of calling this cosine theta, I'm just gonna call this the light coefficient. At some point, I'm probably gonna wanna know which side of the polygon the light is on. Oh, how do I figure out which side of the plane I'm on? Oh, I've got, oh, I've got a plane test, okay. And oh, I can just plug in the points, can I? And let me just plug in these points appropriately. The only problem is I still don't know which side of the normal to use, but I guess because we can have more than one light coefficient for a different lighting source, I guess I'll just add them together. So I'll have outside of this loop, I'll have a starting light coefficient of zero in the case where nothing is lighting anything, and the max would be one. Basically, I'm just gonna do a clamp on it, or a min-max, as I call it, where I just add our cosine theta to it, but the value needs to be within the range of zero and one. So if our plane test comes out true or false, I, I don't know which one to do yet. I mean, I'll just see what happens. Basically, I'm just putting this code within the plane test so that if the light source is on the wrong side, it won't light it up. Although now that I'm thinking about it, I'm using the same side of the polygon as the indoor and the outdoor, aren't I? I guess it doesn't matter which side it's actually on because yeah, the walls of the inside of the house are the same as the outside of the house, aren't they? Yeah, this is a rudimentary lighting system. I didn't say it was good. Yeah, you'd have to double up the polygons on the inside in order to be able to tell the difference between indoor and outdoor lighting. That's fine. I just want to get something working is all. Now this is this is where I need to convert the color system. So I have this function hex to RGB. I'm going to hex to RGB the polygons fill value. So that gives me the RGB color system. However, if you go into your fancy paint application here, you might notice that while there's 
R, G, and B values, which these three values can give you any of the colors on your computer screen. There's also hue, saturation, and luminosity values, which also make up their own model and give you the same color value. And you can convert between the two. Now, how do you actually convert between the two is the question. This website is useful. What's cool is I can actually basically just copy what's on the screen without actually even having to really think about what I'm doing. Okay, so there's four different cases for the hue calculation. So we're just gonna handle that with an if statement. The hue actually ranges from zero to 360 degrees, which is why there's a 60 degrees there. So there's our hue value, then the saturation calculation, divide by the biggest color, subtracted by the smallest color, that's the saturation. So yeah, hue is the, the, the color specifically, saturation is how colorful it is, and valence is how bright it is. So yeah, return where H is the hue, S is the sat, and the valence is actually our Cmax. And then that should give us back an object, which is the hue, saturation, and valence values. So I convert the RGB value to an HSV value by providing the RGB. And now I have our HSV. And within the HSV object, all I'm basically gonna do is I'm gonna take the valence value and I'm going to modify it. The valence being the brightness, of course. Now the simplest and easiest way to actually handle this would just be to set the HSV equal to the light coefficient because we've already determined what we want our lighting to be. It might be a good idea to make a min-max on it. And of course, then nothing can be pure white or pure black, but that's fine. Okay, now we have to go back to RGB. <laughs> Great. How do we how do we go back, website? Do you, do you tell me how to go back? Oh, good. I love the internet. It tells me everything. Just colors are confusing. Copy the website. Great. So theoretically, this should work. And so now I have RGB2, and then I just need to get it back into a hex value that we can interpret. Yeah, so I'm just gonna make another function here called RGB to hex. Yeah, there we go. Although this isn't actually hex. So you know what, I'm just gonna call it RGB to string because it's not RGB to hex. And we set the CTX's fill style equal to that RGB string. I mean, let's go see if it actually functions. Uh, no, of course it doesn't work unexpected token. How do I just, do I not know how things work? Maybe I just should define it separately, right? Maybe I should just, you know, make it in its own thing. Just, just copy it into here and then return it afterward. Why would this be any differently? I don't know. Maybe returning something can be weird sometimes. All right. Are you, are you happy with this now? Oh, actually. Okay. Sure. JavaScript, whatever. That's fine. Maybe this is why I should use an ID, because it would just tell me these things. I cannot read properties of undefined. How silly of me. I needed to put an S. Wait a minute. Could I have just multiplied each of the RGB values by that scalar factor, and that would have saved me all this time, and I wouldn't have had to go and convert between HSV? Like, I could have just did, like, R times the light coefficient, G times the light coefficient, B times the light coefficient. I don't know. Maybe there's some reason why I couldn't just do that. All right. Um, everything is like really dark. Whoa, holy crap, it's freaking lighting in here. Oh my god, what the frick? Lighting? What? I don't know where I put my light source. <laughs> I think I, I think I did it like actually the opposite with, with the plane test. Um, maybe, maybe, um, I should change this to if not plane test and it will work better. And no, 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 now everything's dark. I can't see anything anymore. Yeah, maybe, maybe let's just get rid of the plane test real quick. Let's just have everything bright, right? No, wait, that's... What is happening here? I mean, there's like clearly lighting going on. Like we've decided that lighting is happening here. All right, you know what? Let me just start moving the light source. Let me just put like a, a tiny little counter in here. At the moment, the lighting is literally just infinite. And so I'm not actually taking into account the distance that the light is from the object. That could definitely be something that I could definitely take into account. Yeah, I'm just gonna like move this in weird directions and see what happens. Maybe if I have these on different amounts, actually, it'll be uh, it'll be better because they'll be in like different planes or something. I don't know. Let's just see what that does. Okay, so so there's like more lighting now. I mean, this is clearly like lighting. Like like there's like shadows that I didn't actually put there. 
I mean, that's kind of cool. What the frick? What the hell just happened? Did the lighting just suddenly change? <laughs> what is my counter doing? Okay, so, um... So shouldn't the, the light source be moving and it being like a consistent value and not just like seeing... I shouldn't just be seeing it flash different colors. Like I should be seeing like smooth changes, shouldn't I? Why is it doing this? I mean, it's interesting to see the lighting change, but I don't even know what I wrote at this point. I don't know what code I wrote. I don't know why things are just like randomly flashing. Did, what the fr everything is dark now. Everything is dark. What did I, what code did I write? How is it not a smooth transition? But yeah, I mean, there's lighting, I guess, kind of. Maybe I'll like think about it and see like what I did wrong. It, the light source should be smoothly moving across the screen. Should I just draw a polygon where the light source is? We'll do that, whatever. I'll just draw a, a prism where the light source is and maybe that will help me to understand what stupid thing I'm doing. And I'll just make it a little object. I'll do like 40, 40, 40 as the size. And then I'll have like a little prism and I'll see what, what's actually happening with the lighting. Where is it? Oh, there is the sun. Ah, okay. I kind of see why the lighting is doing what it's doing now. And then see when the lighting goes below it, it changes maybe? What the frick is the sun deciding to do? What the frick? Okay, and that's why it's just popping because it's just, it looped to somewhere else. And it actually, okay, so the lighting actually is slowly dimming. It's just, it's not doing it quick enough. And so the only thing that you notice is when it, when the sun just decides to pop into a different position. Okay, there's the sun right above us. And as you can see, it lit up this one roof. Oh, nope, nope, but it moved, it moved. Where's the sun now? Oh, there it is, over there. And it lit up this back wall, I guess, for some reason. And, um, but not the inside. Okay, but now, now it lit it up. This is very sensible lighting. If instead of doing like counter mod, I did math dot cosine of counter, then this will make it go back and forth. And so it's not gonna, you're not gonna see drastic changes. And then maybe I can do like a plus five here. And then you'll be able to. Okay, okay, so, um, why is everything dark? The sun is right there. You see it? It's right up there. Oh, it's not moving because I said counter plus five instead of counter plus equals five. Oh, my epilepsy. Okay, let's get a, a decent value in here. Okay, there we go. Look, look at the sun rotating around. That's a cool sun. Look at this nice sun. What? Okay, I'm trying to figure out the logic here. It just feels like when it's on the right side, it lights it up. And when it's on the left side, it darkens it. Well, maybe if I take the absolute value of the dot product, because the magnitude is going to be positive no matter what. Okay, does this make any more sense yet? Is the left side going to be dark? What the? F okay, I'm going to slow down the sun a little bit more. Um, I'm also going to make the sun bigger. I feel like that's a tiny sun. Yeah, let's make it 80, 80, 80. Let's just slow down the sun a little bit more. Does this make any sense yet? It like resembles lighting. It doesn't follow any actual logic, but it's doing something, right? I mean, look at this table. Look at this table, right? Look is how the walls don't block any actual light and how they change to different things because the sun outside is moving around. All right, give me a second to load in a model and see how that works. All right, we got the dog's 3D model. Let's hit save as a 3D model and then save it as a 3MF extract the dog that gives me the 3d model dot model file that i want and there's doggy oh look at the doggy and i mean the the shapes are kind of broken they're not perfect okay fine you could tell that my engine is not is not the best and but look it's a 3d model like i can actually see detail on it now like when you get up close to it i mean what is going on why is it deciding to just break on me oh whoa we can go inside the dog what I mean, you could just see we can go right in, right into the dog, just right up its butt. Wow, I wish this wasn't so terribly buggy. But what are you gonna do? It's my stupid engine. Look at that shape down there. That looks cool. Does the lighting make sense? Like, is that should the darkness be there? And then when it comes over on this side, is it gonna light up the face at all? No, but see, it gets, it gets, it's getting darker 
but it should get lighter when the, when it's I don't know. You know, I, my brain can't even like understand the concept of lighting. Mm -hmm.